Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures, and look what the cat dragged in. Actually, the cat didn't, because I don't have a cat, but the dog barked at the mailman at least, so that's got to count for something, right? I hope. Anyway, today we have the new Wadroon Faction Starter set for Parabellum's Conquest. First Blood is the name of their smaller scale skirmish rules, and the Wadroon, if you didn't already notice, are big, burly, orc-like men and women, or I shouldn't say men and women, male and female uh, warriors that look quite ferocious on the tabletop and colorful. That's one thing this set actually has. So you're going to have four brave or blooded options. The braves being the dudes with the spears and shields, whereas the blooded are carrying dual close combat weapons. And then we have hunters or slingers, guys with spears, guys with slings and lots of fabulous feathers everywhere. However, we also get, what is this dude again? The Predator. The Predator is this big burly dude with a big honking crossbow ready to carve up his opponents. So you get everything in there. So you get, what is it, eight plastic figures. So you get two frames of the basic troops. But the cool thing is that Predator is actually a straight out of the box resin kit release as well. If you've never seen the Conquest resins, I'm a big fan. Here we have a Hunter card. All of the requisite bases and regiment stands for those bases. You do have that option of running things in regiments in small clumps in First Blood. We'll get to those sprues in a second. We have the first, but ooh, Wadroon Edition. Interesting. Okay, I have a regular rule book handy, but I don't have a Wadroon Edition one. I wonder if there's been any errata or updated stuff. So here you see more cards. Blooded, Braves, and Slingers, and the Hunters are somewhere else. Okay, cool. I like that they're already in the sleeves. Kind of a nice touch. If you aren't aware, you also get ooh, ah, instructions. So here's how we build the Blooded and the Braves. Interesting that it has everything from both kits. Nope, this is just, okay, just a real quick look at how to build them. Let's get it zoomed in here. Take a closer look. So here is what the Predator looks like. card included. What is in pieces that I need to figure out how to open? Can I? Can he do it? Yeah, eventually I can. All right, let's take a look at what we got here. And I love these boxes, by the way. I've said that many times. I'm curious if there's anything different in this book. Well, for starters, there should be a Wadroon section because the original book wouldn't have had that, I think. I could be wrong. I'm going to have to grab that out now. I don't know where I put it. Okay. I wonder if it's only the Wadroon that are in here. Line of Conquest, Predator, our various regiments, the Bound, the Braves, Blooded, Veterans, Hunters, Slingers, Chosen of Conquest, Chosen of Death, Chosen of Famine, okay, Warbred, Brutes, Hunting Pack, I believe these are the girls on the, nope, that's the Raptor Riders, sorry, Thunder Riders sound interesting. They are heavy cavalry. Maybe Triceratops. Chosen of War. Quattle. Drum Beast. Tontor. And the one that I'm quite curious to see. The Apex Predator. Of course, I've been printing all kinds of dinosaurs lately. So, we'll put those to use. Okay, so this looks like this is only going to have the Wadroon in the army list. Does it say that and not waste my time? I guess so. Okay. So yeah, 
the basic rules at least are going to stay the same regardless of what faction you end up with but you will only get the wadroon rules in the book with this edition now those rules are available online if you're curious to just check out the game they are there for you look at that detail work on all of his little tribal scars and dreadlocks and stuff that's going to be a fun one. This guy looks even bigger than the regular Wandroon. Lots of skulls and funky straps. Looks like a Carnotosaurus head. I don't know where it goes. Oh, I think he's supposed to be, yeah, standing on his kill. Big cleaver with a lot of flash. Let me get that cleaned up. Like I said, a big crossbow. Big crossbow. For reference. It's about as big as a hunter's bow. I should grab, you know what, let me see. I think I do have some of their unpainted hunter friends that I have yet to bother to film. Here we go. Who wore it better, right? Okay, yeah, that's a way more impressive crossbow than a puny human one. All right, so that is the Predator. We've got his straps. We've got his body. We've got the quiver, which I forgot about. Crossbow, the mess I made everywhere that you can't see on the screen at the moment. And then his knife as well. Let's take a look at the actual plastic sprues. So you get one and a half sprues for the blooded slash braves. These are the close combat guys. You do not get the command sprue, but there are enough options for everybody on this. And like I said, it's actually one and a half because then you also have an extra sprue with more heads, more spears, and more weapons. So that's kind of cool. Also, one of the torsos is going to have their piece right here. Everything else on the bodies is going to be clearly marked which ones go to which. So these are numbered, whereas the other ones are lettered, so you really, truly can't get them too mixed up. These are the hunters slash slingers. So you can see the hunters spears. The slingers have these big honking slings. And the heads are looking like they might cooperate with each other. These guys look pretty heavily armored, actually. Even in comparison to the Blooded and Braves. That's one thing I like about these guys so far, is they're not just running into battle with a couple of scraps and bones tied together like the Savage Orcs tend to do. And then I'm assuming these are some kind of an ammo pouch attached to the fancy wings. I guess if you want to make some fancy Orcish winged hussars <laughs> might be a good way to do it. Okay, I believe these skulls are some kind of shoulder pad or something. I'm not 100% sure. They look more decorative than they do for actual headdresses. Not sure where these are going to go. That's okay. I'm going to go ahead and get these built and I'm going to play around with the actual Braves and Blooded, since I already have some, and this time around, I wonder if I can actually, oh no, I can't make an extra command sprue, darn, I used up all those parts already, shucks. Oh well, we will put these together nonetheless, and we'll take a good long look at them in just a sec, so sit tight. Alright, so we went ahead and got our Wadroon Force all put together, and I'm going to start with the Predator, because they are, well, the coolest. They're big, they're bulky, they got a nasty looking crossbow, big old machete, and they've got a severed carnosaur head on their base. So, quite impressive, and he's a big dude. I mean, like I said, really, he's just, you know, going off the base in every possible direction, overhangs it in almost every way, shape, or form. You know, you put him even next to a conquest human. And I mean, he's not like, he, he's a big dude. 
Is he as big as the Scion? I guess so. And I mean, Conquest humans are quite large to begin with, so that's really saying something. Look at this little piddly orc next to these big bad boys. Yeah, I dig him. I think, you know, he's got those cool little tribal scarring tattoo patterns going on in his chest there. He's looking really cool. Uh, for me, the box is almost worth the price of admission alone for this guy. I mean, you know, he's going to be 20-something plus on his own as it is. So half the cost of the box was him plus a bunch of plastic, you know, modular dudes plus the rule book. And I got to say, I'm really impressed looking through the rule book. They've definitely got plans for these guys. There are tons of other units listed in there. And the only real downside, like I pointed out earlier, I think, was that the rule book that's included with these guys is only for the Wadroon. Whereas if you pick up any of the other First Blood kits, the starter sets, it's going to have stats for every single faction up to these guys. They're not in it yet. But who knows, you know, version 2.0 sometime down the line, maybe we'll see something like that. We have his blooded buddies here that are actually painted. I think there's a lot of interesting textures and patterns here, so you can really have a field day coloring and painting these guys. Coloring, I don't know how that's going to work. Paint markers, maybe? But here we got a couple more. Well, these wouldn't, yeah, these would be blooded. These would not be the Braves. Dig the Bane masks. Wearing a bunch of bones as ornamentation, crazy looking weapons. And they are wearing some armor. I'm not just going in the hand to hand, you know, wearing rags like other companies, Savage Orcs. So that would be the close combat guys along with their resin boss leader. And let's take a look at the hunters. The hunters are the javelin throwers. For whatever reason, they have a very Mesoamerican style to their heads and helmets. I believe I counted eight different heads available, and they look like they might work okay with the other plastic kit. I'm not 100% sure. Their armor is a bit more distinct in terms of patterns of what they're wearing. Where did I put the other one? There is one more here somewhere. Where did you go? Aha! He's hiding under the camera. Here we go. Can these guys have more helmets and headdresses on? Can lots of interesting textures, patterns, variety of material. Kind of reminds me actually of the... Nord's Trolls for Conquest in terms of just all the various layers of stuff woo, that they're wearing there. But the real stars of this box, and I mean, I had too much fun building these, now I want to go get more of them, are the Slingers. These guys looking like they came out of some kind of bloodthirsty carnival in Rio or something. They are fabulous. You can check out those funky helmets. I think you're going to have a lot of fun painting these. I know I am. And I'm actually really curious to see what the command options are like. I think one guy's wearing like a dinosaur skull. It makes me curious how compatible they are. Okay, more fancy helmet. A lot of the, I want to say two of the four poses didn't have their feet on the ground. So, gonna have to get creative there. And honestly, I was shocked for as wild of poses as I put everybody in. Now, obviously, in a real game of Conquest, I'm not gonna have a mixed unit of both Slingers and Hunters, but you can actually get, <laughs> with a little wiggling, and we do I. You know what, just before filming, I actually got all four on here as I brought them into the room. Okay, well, <laughs> you can see that they do kind of fit on on a regiment stand there. Uh, obviously, I think if you wanted to get really particular, you'd probably want to make sure you're being aware of having everybody rank up. Me, I'm not. 
that's just a bonus after effect if they actually do. Uh, they're just, I think, very interesting, visually distinct models, especially with the various influences going on with their gear there. And I gotta say, I'm looking forward to seeing what they've got coming down the pipeline. Uh, one thing I noticed is, compared to a lot of the other factions so far in Conquest, they have a lot of options for what are they, the adjunct or lieutenant type units. I don't recall seeing as many in the other factions, and I know some of them actually have stuff released, whereas these guys do not yet. Um, then they have like the various factions that go along with the Scion and their whole you know, focus on combat and whatever. And I still don't know what the deal is with all these spikes. I don't know if they're blades. I don't know if they're bones. Some of them have them, some of them don't. So, I don't know, we'll just paint them as we go. But I gotta say, uh, fun looking group. If you like your orcs of a very savage and interesting look, I'd say definitely give these guys a good look-see. I mean, obviously they are going to be a bit bigger than other stuff on the market. I think they would blend in pretty well with some of the Yadaro Savage Orcs. Uh, these guys, obviously, with the advantage of being in plastic, being modular, and totally being flexible in how you build them. These poor humans just don't stand a chance against them. Even the big dudes like the Nords are kind of dwarfed in terms of size by these guys. So yeah, they're pretty impressive. The only things I can think that would be larger would be the trolls, at least in an infantry scale, for a conquest. And I've mentioned it probably before, but i got to say, as more and more figures come out for the game, especially in plastic, uh, I think it really opens up avenues for customization, but also just regular gaming because there's just more and more stuff being released and I, I gotta give Parabellum credit there's just a lot of fun interesting unique sculpts in the game so far and I absolutely look forward to seeing more of that stuff in the future with that said this has been High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures saying thanks for watching and we will see you back here soon bye bye